Hi guys, it's Jomi, and here's the long-awaited Valorant Velocity tutorial for DaVinci Resolve. Uh, before we go further into anything, I'd recommend getting familiar with the software if you're a beginner. And if you need help with that, I'd go watch the AMV Basics video by Page Entertainment, which will be in the description. First, import your song, and then sync to the beats that you want to sync to. In this case, I'm creating a 1-2-3 sequence. Now this is where stuff can get a bit tricky for some editors. In this case, I'm going to use an operator clip, as I have found guns with high recoil, such as operators and sheriffs, are pretty easy to understand and velocity. We're going to cut certain parts of the clip to the beats. The first beat being the operator pulling back the bolt, the second beat pushing the bolt back, and the final beat being the kill. Also note for the second clip, when we're pushing the bolt back, you also want to include one frame of the scope where we can see the enemy. This will make sense later. Now that we got each clip cut up, we're going to compound each individual clip and then drag in a fusion composition. We're going to adjust the fusion composition's duration to the same length of each marker. Now that we got that laid out, we're going to open it in the fusion page. Just right click and open in fusion page. We're going to drag our first clip that we compounded into the nodes. If we were to select the node that you just dragged in, you may notice these numbers. That number represents the amount of frames that your clip is. Take note of that number as we're going to be using that number when we're doing our velocity. Now you're going to get two nodes. Shift space and then enter optical flow and then time stretcher. Make sure the nodes are in this order and then we are going to connect them. Now that we connected the nodes, you may notice a frozen screen. Well, we are going to manually input the frames in the time stretcher. That is why we need to remember the frames in that clip. We are going to go to the very end of the clip and then input the number 8. We're also going to enable flow and clap edges with previous and next. This is where stuff can get a bit tricky for some editors as we are going to learn the spline graph. We want the clip to play fast and then slow down, so we can do a simple graph like this. Also note that graphs are freeform, so you can always adjust it to your liking. If there's warping or you just don't like how it looks like, then just feel free to adjust it. After playing around with it, this is what it should look like. Now we're basically going to do the same thing for the other clips, but in this case we are going to be learning something called 3 point velocity. The first two points being the frames that you want to showcase the most, while the third point can help create impact or help the clip flow to another. If we weren't to include the third point, it would make it look like the clip is just cutting to another. Now basically do the same node setup we did, and then keyframe the first and last frame of your clip. Now like we mentioned before, we are going to find that frame that we want to showcase the most. In this case, we want to showcase the pushback of the bolt. If we play back the clip, we can notice that the source time is giving us a specific frame. We want to find the frame that we want to showcase, and in this case, we want to showcase the pushback of the bolt. Once we find that, which in this case is 4, we are going to go a couple frames back from the last keyframe, and then we are going to input the number 4. Now for the first two points, you're basically going to do the same graph that you did for the last one, with some adjustments. And for the last keyframes, we are going to make something called a slow and fast graph. Also make sure when we're doing the slow and fast graph, we want to move this point a bit up just so we can avoid some frozen frames. Once we adjusted the graphs to our liking, this is what it should look like. Now with the kill, we're just going to do the same thing. Now since this gun has high recoil, we are going to find the frame when it's at its peak. We're going to use that frame as our second point. Once we got that set up, we're just going to do the same graphs that we did before. Once we adjusted everything, this is what the result should look like. Now I won't be going into depth with some pan crop and effects simply because that's more preference based, but if you're still having trouble, I'll leave some stuff in the description for your needs. Also note, the only reason I compounded those clips and cut them up is because if you're a beginner, it would be easier to navigate with all the frames, but if you're more experienced, you can just do all the time stretcher stuff on a single clip. This was Jomi, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.